Yeah, the Mavs are just better. They've been a buzzsaw since basically the trade deadline. First off, obligatory, I picked the Wolves in 6 or 7 to win the series. Obviously, that is not going to happen now. Also, yes, my Celtics are up 3-0. I, I do want to do a video about the Celtics playoff run, but I kind of want to wait until that series is wrapped up. But, you know, big comeback for them in that one. Shout out to Drew and Horford making a bunch of threes. Anyway, to talk about this game, I do want to talk a bit about uh, the Wolves' process on offense to make this a closer game and how Dallas pulled away from that. But for first, I think we should just start with the last couple of minutes there. I mean, it was Luka making... Uh, turn around two over Jaden uh, off a of single coverage. Now there was like one play not later, not not much later, where Jaden did force a turnover against Lucas, so that's cool. But like we know that Lucas had the better of that matchup, as he does against pretty much every matchup. A few minutes before that, he had a turn around two on Nas Reed, where the Wolves the defense was good, but it was single coverage, and he just made a good shot against a good contest. And then he had earlier than that, he had that step back three in the corner over Cat, which was wild. And then later on in the fourth, we had Kyrie making a long two-pointer in the corner over Cat, where he was playing high up on that screen. Just the shot making from those two, but also just some heads-up plays as well, where, like, we'll get to the Wolves on the other end in a second, but you would have, like, uh, because obviously, like, they're bringing Cat high up on the action. Uh, Rudy was high up on the action a little more in this game. And there was a really heads-up play by Luka in the fourth, where he threw the pass to Kyrie on the wing before, like, right as the double was coming, basically, because then that means that the rotation on the back end has got to be there, so Ant is, like, in the paint, ready to contest something, probably, like, you know, Gafford catching the ball in the middle or whatever, but because the pass went there, it's, you know, two Kyrie swing to P.J. Washington for the corner three, like, that's just Luka being a genius, right? And, of course, that was something that Dallas had to deal with, the fact of, you know, it's Gafford who's got to make that play in the middle, or, I mean, hell, we saw Dwight Powell minutes in this game, you know, with, with Lively out, and hopefully Lively's okay. And then as far as the Wolves in that fourth quarter on offense, specifically at, like, the last couple of minutes there, it was rough. And it felt like Luka was on Nas Reed for some possessions there. And uh, there was one play where I felt like the Wolves were able to really take advantage of that, where they had Nas Reed screen for Conley, putting Luka in the action, and he was able to catch it and drive, and then he uh, drew a foul on a Gafford at the rim. But besides that, it was just kind of the script we've seen throughout the series. I mean, like, Ant had his best game of the series, no doubt. But also late there, I mean, he had one missed layup where the Mavs packed the paint in. Another time where the Mavs forced him to kick it out to Nas Reed for a corner three, which obviously, like, that's not a bad shot. We just saw Nas Reed go crazy in the previous game. But it's still better than Ants getting, like, an uncontested drive at the rim, right? And uh, Luka had a good closeout on that one, so that's a missed three. They had one play where Conley ended up taking a pull-up three off of a screen action, and Ant just did not touch the ball at all. Similar to the play where Gafford blocked Conley from behind. It was a great play by Gafford. So yeah, it wasn't a great last couple of minutes for the Wolves offensively, which is wild because before that, there was like the slow-mo show for a little bit. I mean, of course, you know, Ant had that, somehow he made that skip pass to Kyle Anderson, who then, I mean, Kyle Anderson basically just had the fastest shot of his NBA career, as far as I'm concerned, as he made that uh, deep two. And then, you know, they were running really good actions where like Conley was the second screener in an Ant Rudy action, so he would flash out to three, and then he was getting a three off of that one, or they would run a horns action with Ant and Nas Reed, and then Ant would do a flash out to the wing, and then it's basically him just driving at Josh Green, who's already a little off balance. That's how we got the dunk on Gafford. I thought Nas Reed had some good contests where they would put two to the ball on Kyrie or Luka, then he would be ready to contest Gafford at the rim. Like, the Wolves, they were knocking on the door, and obviously the comeback was real for a minute there, but in the end, it was Luka and Kyrie, at least for making plays down the stretch. I mean, you know, Derek Jones had three threes in this one. I feel like all of them were in the first half off of them putting two to the ball on Luka or Kyrie, but a lot of the time Luka, and he's making like a corner three. And I guess we can take it to the whole game now. Like, yeah, the Wolves, early in the game, like, they were doing two to the ball on Luka. I mean, you saw, like, at least a lively dunk where it felt like Ant was a little slow as the low man. You saw, like I mentioned, a Derrick Jones three. Or Dallas would get into some, like, Kyrie get a screen on one wing, Luka standing on the other wing. Both of those led to Jaden playing off of Luka a little too much, so he's getting a rare catch-and-shoot three for himself. And then defensively for Dallas, even with the lively not out there for the uh, later part of the game. They did what they've continued to do. They've just been great. You know, it's a lot of the time it's off of plays that by themselves don't feel massive, but then you just add them up and, you know, it's Luka having multiple good closeouts on Nasri in that fourth quarter. Or a play where, you know, Conley runs like a baseline action, which earlier he got a super duper wide open three on in the fourth quarter. They run it again. This time Kyrie and PJ Washington switch the action. So it's PJ going to Conley and then Kyrie on a cat. His cat was screening and then somehow Cat just kind of lost the ball for like the pass went array I don't know but it was a turnover so yeah now look I mean again Ant had his best game of the series so that's cool Cat was once again not good five for 18 I've already seen some uh, Wolves fans takes about Cat after this game we'll just you know we'll, we'll let the post-loss madness settle down for a little bit 
But yeah, I think what we learned in this series is that when facing an elite defense, and that's what this Mavs team is, they are an elite defense, this is the next step for this Wolves team. Okay, and that's everybody. It's not just one specific guy, whatever, right? We saw that they can do it against an average defense, which is basically what Phoenix was. They can do it against a good defense, which is what Denver was. They can't do it against an elite defense. At least not yet. And so while I I really do not want this to turn into some Anthony Edwards roast session or whatever, but it's like, look, you're the guy who's going to draw up all the extra attention. And we know what his uh, shooting splits have been in the series. You know, it was better in this game again, but those first two games especially were rough. And uh, I do think with Ant, like, obviously he has made progress as a playmaker. He's getting, he's getting better at skip passes. He's getting better at, you know, when these guys collapse on me, you know, this pass. I mean, he had a great, like, pass to basically almost behind his head to Jaden McDaniels for a three in this game. But it, there's another level of defense manipulation that Luca is at, for example, and it's not just with like Luca's passing, but it's also Luca's ability to like you know constantly get Jaden McDaniels on his back, and then from there it's operating whether it's the floater, whether it's holding the ball for an extra second or two because then he knows someone's going to rotate over, and then it's going to be a corner three or whatever. Like that's the peak level of whatever I'm talking about right now. But let's not get it twisted. I mean, Ant, you know, he went on a shot making stretch in this game that kind of allowed the Wolves to make it interesting in the second half, you know. And then as far as playoff Carl Anthony Towns, I mean, look, like he could be the guy who keeps you in the game in the first half of Game 7 against the Nuggets by scoring in the post against like Jamal Murray when he can get the switch. Or he can be the guy who just looks like he doesn't know what to do against P.J. Washington being physical against him and just Dallas's defense collapses on him. Like Some guys are just going to be like that. And as for Dallas, I mean, the front office just hit home run after home run, man. What was the thing about Lively when he was getting drafted? It was... This is the exact type of center that Dallas needs. It's a question of if he's ready right away. Clearly, he was ready right away and then some. The Gafford-PJ trade, getting Derek Jones on a small contract. Obviously, the Kyrie trade, which, you know, is a little before the rest of that stuff, but no, it's been crazy, man. I mean, it's not final just yet, but like, yeah, we're going to get a Celtics-Mavs finals, and you can already write the storylines between, you know, Luka and Perzingis, Kyrie and the Celtics, me and my heart rate. It should be good. Again, I do want to do a sort of, like, talk about the Celtics playoff run when they've officially, you know, beaten the Pacers. So, yeah, also, game one of the finals is June 6th. So if these both are going to be sweeps, like, I don't know, what the hell are we going to do for a little bit there? 